Welcome everyone to Product One's technical web series. Today we're going to look at casting, uh, more specifically this item over here. Uh, this is an engine rocker arm. Uh, it's one of the components that they fit on top of engines. So we're going to look at how do you uh, look at preparing a component for a casting process. So without wasting any delays, so this is the engine rocker arm that we've just developed. So I now need to do this uh, casting process. So casting is this, the process where they use different sorts of material. In this one, I'm going to show you how you use sand and they actually pour the liquid metal to form this component like this. So if you've got a casting license inside Creo Parametric, I'm using Creo Parametric 7.0 here. Uh, you have obviously the ability to initiate a casting module. So you can actually call this whatever. And of course, you can choose different units. This is how the process uh, start like. So now this is the casting user interface and it tells you here that you're busy with the casting process. It sort of like guides you in terms of the methodology in which you need to follow. The first thing that you need to do is put in the reference component or the component which you want to cast. And there's an array of, of options to choose from. For, for an example, here I can choose to have just one arrangement and I can tweak the layout to accommodate multiple instances and I can even choose uh, the, the actual layout in terms of be it secular, radius or whatever the case is. In fact, Let's choose this one and I can even show you how I can tweak even the rotational angle. So this is maybe might not be conducive to what I want to do. I can also tweak this and say, how about I rotate that angle, maybe a certain number of degrees, for an example. When I preview this, is this what I'm looking for? If the answer is yes, and that's what I have. So now all that I have is these reference components. Now, immediately from here, I can now generate my stock model or other people refer to this as a workpiece. So this is that metal that I'm going to cut in half to simulate the both ends of my casting. So, of course, I can modify the sizes in this. You will see that the process is actually uh, fairly easy due to the fact that there's predefined web pieces, but you can also draw your own web piece as well. Now that we've actually got this, I'm going to move ahead of the process and just say, how about I generate a parting surface? So the reason why I do it this way is to show you that the system allows you to have as much flexibility as possible. As you can see there, that's my parting surface. I don't wanna see this at the moment. I'm gonna now choose to hide it but I know it's there. Now, there's a couple of things that I need to do. In order for you to create a component that's uh, casted, you need to have an opening, or some people call it a sprue, and you can even generate what we call a pouring basin. You can have a look at, 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 at generating something like that. But for this particular instance, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to generate a cutout here at the top, to allow the liquid metals to be poured. And of course, I can provide uh, an array of, of entities here. I can choose to sketch. Alternatively, I can have a predefined sketch here. So I'm going to just put the sketch over here on the side so that you see how it looks like. So this is the sketch that I have. And of course, this is not where I wanna put the sketch. I'm gonna just take it and put it in the designated location, which is in this instance here. Right, so now I've got this, I'm going to say, there's my gate or my sprue. Now, in order for the metal to truncate uh, or move flow into all these other areas, I need to generate something else. So that something else is called a runner. So I can choose the shape of the runner, the diameter thereof, and say, how about I choose that as my sketching plane. All that I have to do now is actually specify 
from this area to where I'm going to be having what we regard as my cast result. You will see us defining the cast result in the later stages of this. Now that I've actually got this, I can say, okay, now add this into my casting and this is what I have. Now I can do overflow islands as well. So maybe let's quickly do that. So I can choose an overflow island. I can choose a different diameter for weekend. And what I'm going to do with the overflow island is I'm going to do something a little bit unique. I'm going to just select the existing edge, specify the offset value and select maybe even the curved instance. Now I have defined this overflow island. However, I still need to go back and specify a runner that will be connected to that overflow island. What that means is I now need to have a channel that runs from here and the other one that takes up to that point. Now I can add these two and say, add them onto what I've just defined. And of course I can replicate this and say, how about I take those two as a group and obviously pattern them around the axis. So for an example, let's take these two and say, we want to pattern them. Let's choose a different type of pattern. So let's say that's what we're looking for. And of course I can choose to say, uh, this is my reference point and that's the pattern that I'm looking at. Now, why this is significant is because I've just shown you how to generate overflow islands runners on top of this. But what happens about, what happens to these holes? So those holes, uh, I, yes, are going to be post machined, but I need to make sure that as I'm creating my cast, that is actually not closed up by the liquid metal. How you get to do something like that is by utilizing what we call the sand cores. So I'm going to just make my workpiece transparent and come back here and say, I'm going to generate the sand core. And uh, let's call the first one to be sand core one, just for argument's sake. Then what I'm going to do uniquely, I'm going to generate a component by utilizing the coordinate systems that are referenced there. And just like that, I'm going to specify a reference. And this is the actual opening or the hole that I want to close in this instance. I can specify the magnitude of my sand core. Of course, it needs to be on both sides. And that's what I have. And that's how it looks like at the moment. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add some finer details here. Maybe let's say we're picking a chamfer. So I can say, okay, maybe this is fine. How about we modify, let's say the angle. Let's make it as 80. So now remember, this is just a normal component, which as you can see, I can replicate to all the other uh, sections where I need it. Now, last but not least, I'm gonna repeat exactly the same process. And for this one, it's going to be for that small little hole. And this is the hole that we're referring to. So all that I'm doing now is specifying that as a reference and of course, those edges. And that's the area in which I wanna fill. So, what I now have generated is components further to what we're trying to, to do here. So just like the other one, I'm going to just say, how about we create a chamfer in those two edges? And of course, as you saw, I'm going to say, how about we modify the angle of this to be not 80 this time, maybe let's make this 177. Now, essentially, this gives me uh, what we call sand cores that are closing uh, that area. Now, last but not least, I'm going to put back a petting surface. So that's the surface that I'm going to use to open up this. Before we start, I'm going to say generate a cutout. So this cutout, as you can see, it's going to be generated from the workpiece. 
all the entities that have just developed, the runners, the overflow channels, and the actual geometry itself will be part and parcel of that. And then comes the fun part where I now specify that I'm going to split this casting in that particular area and I can specify how many more volumes that I want. I can even have a preview of it. Oh, that's how it's going to look like. So now that I've actually got my volume, I now need to generate components out of those volumes. So that's essentially what I'm going to do here where I select those entities and just like that, I'm having the components. So I'm going to generate what we regard as the cast result and let's give it a name and call it Bob. Now, as you can see, there's my cast result. All these other entities, I no longer need them. So what I'm referring to here is the reference components, we no longer need them because they've served their purpose. So I can hide those. I can hide the perting surface because I don't need it. I can also hide the workpiece. And essentially, that's the component that I'm having. All right. So I can also say, how about I open this mold and see how, or casting rather. The process is similar, of course, hence why you see the confusion here. So I'm going to define the first move. So I've just moved the first portion. So of course, there's technical terms on this. There is what we call the the drag box and, and things like that. But just to keep this uh, as less technical as possible, this is essentially what I have. So essentially, what I've done here is generated an exploded view that shows the cast result. It shows the bottom and top uh, sandboxes. Now, of course, you can treat things like the sand cores, of course, I can say take all of these and maybe move further down and take, let's say, the small ones and take them maybe the opposite direction. So it's generally up to you and you can color these any way you like or put, uh, I'll call it, uh, different material and so forth. And you can even render these as, as you like. So why is this important is because of, I have something similar that I've just generated here, where I went as far as generating the wooden patterns. So those are the wooden plates that they use to make this imprint onto the sand. Just like when you're playing with sand castles when you were a kid. And of course, there's many rules that one needs to observe to say if there's draft angles and things like that. But in a nutshell, that's how you do casting inside Creo Parametric 7.0. If you like the video, please give us a thumbs up. Do not forget to subscribe. Until next time, thank you very much.